Hey, I want to do a quick history video on this guy right here. Boom! That's my drawing of the guy, and here's the real image. Okay, back to my drawing. The man in the picture is Joseph Medicine Crow, and he was the last Native American war chief. And let me say, this story is bomb. So Medicine Crow was born in 1913 on a reservation near Lodge Grass, Montana. He was born into a Native American tribe called the Crow People. Medicine Crow came from a long line of Native American war heroes. One of these men, his grandpa, raised him tough and taught him how to fight Spartan style. While growing up, his grandpa also told him stories of men in the tribe like him that were given the title war chief. And let me just say, getting this title wasn't easy like getting president. Okay, that was a joke. In order to become a war chief, you needed to meet four requirements. Touching an enemy without killing him, taking an enemy's weapon, leading a successful war party, and steal an enemy's horse. But obviously in that current landscape of war with machine guns, tanks, and planes, completing these was com basically impossible. So he most likely just put it into the back of his mind. So anyways, in 1941, when America joined World War II, Medicine Crow wanting to protect his country and test his skills and listen to the army and was made a scout in the 103rd Infantry. But before he was sent away, he was given a yellow painted eagle feather from a Sundance medicine man for good luck. In every battle, he would paint his arms red and put the feather underneath his hat to represent his tribe. So anyways, Medicine Crow was sent to Normandy and after pushing through the beaches, he went on into Western France, through Paris and pushed on to Berlin. The border of Germany was heavily fortified with machine gun bunkers. During the battle for the Rhine, his commanding officers ordered him to take a team of seven soldiers and was told to push forward with explosives to blow up the bunkers. Basically a suicide mission, but they told him, if anyone can do it, you can. Basic American pride. But he didn't give two flying craps about the bunkers. He ran face first into a hailstorm of bullets and explosions. He didn't get hit at all and blew up the bunker on the Siegfried line so that the infantry could advance. And on top of that, not a single one of his seven men that he had orders over died. On top of that, it is said that he was the first American soldier to cross the German border. This dude is literally Captain America America. If you don't get the joke, it's because the Native Americans were the first American. After that, they kept moving forward. They ended up going through a German town. Since he was a scout, he was told to take the back alley and flank the Germans from behind who were in the main street. As he was flanking, he saw a wall and a gate. He couldn't climb the wall, so he ran to the gate. As he did, a German scout ran over the corner too. They both bumped heads. After a second of shock, they both realized what just happened. Madison Crow, having a faster reaction time, swung his gun from the hilt and knocked the German's gun out of his hand. Not a situation you want to be in. Now the German was just standing there defenseless. And, in the words of Madison Crow, he said, All I had to do was pull the trigger. But for some reason, he put his gun down. And they fist fought. In the middle of a war. After a few seconds of boxing, the German got him on the ground and started to beat him. So the German had the advantage at this point in the fight. But, Madison Crow found the strength to flip the script. He got the German off of him and got on top of him in one single move. Madison Crow grabbed the German by the throat and being adrenaline filled was ready to kill him. The German soldiers started to panic after not being able to get free of Madison Crow's grip. And after a while he screamed for his mommy. When he said that the humanity re-entered Madison Crow and he let him go. He picked up the German, tied him up, grabbed his gun and took him as a prisoner. Without even trying, Medicine Crow just realized that he completed three of the four requirements to be a war chief like his grandpa. He led the war party, fought and captured the enemy, and took his weapon. The only thing left was to capture an enemy horse. Anyways, after that, they kept moving forward. Since he was a scout, he was ahead of his company going through a small mountain. As he was going through, he saw two horses in the distance. So he picked up his scout visor and looked at them. There were two German SS officers riding on horses. So naturally, using his Native American skills, he followed them. The Germans overtook a farm and the horses were kept outside. Almost 50 of them. That's a lot of horses. His company caught up and they surrounded the barn ready to attack early in the morning. Madison Crow, knowing if they attacked all the horses would die, went up to his captain and said, I have an idea. Madison Crow told his captain to give him five minutes that he wanted to go down there and steal the horses not wanting them to die. After the captain agreed, Madison Crow snuck down there, still dark outside, with nothing but his obviously American uniform, a Colt 1911 pistol, and a rope. Once he snuck past the sleeping guards, he got on a horse bareback, put a rope around its mouth, and took off causing a stampede. All 50 horses followed him out of the barn. He thought the horses were beautiful, so he sang a Native American song of praise. The German SS officers woke up to a sound of a stampede and a Native American war cry. When they checked the window, they were met by 
Well, um, let's just say it was a bright morning. So early in the morning, Medicine Crow rode away on a horse singing his song with explosions going on behind him. So anyways, the war ended. He went back home and his tribe elders asked him of his war deeds and he told them. They all agreed with each other and made him a war chief. The last of the High Plains war chiefs to be exact. And that's not even all he did! On top of all that, he was made a knight in the French Legion of Honor, received three PhDs, made dozens of books on military history, stayed married to the same woman for 60 years, and in 2009 got the Presidential Medal of Honor from Barack Obama. And after all that, he lived to be 102 until dying in 2016. Uh, Madison Crow was honestly a very smart and tough man and a great example of if you believe, you can do it. So anyways, that was the story of Joseph Madison Crow, a World War II veteran and the last of the High Plains War Chiefs.